Well, hello there. Um, I am Bobby Clank. I'm a Harvard Law grad turned online entrepreneur, and I am the author of a book that's coming out in early May called Email Marketing That Doesn't Suck. And the worst piece of advice I ever got, um, generally, but especially about email, is to tone down my weekly emails and save the good stuff for my sales and promo emails. Tone down? What? Why would you ever tone down your good stuff, Bobby? I mean, that's idiotic. Who told you that? So it was, you know, it was some of my friends in the online marketing space and, and they were basically saying, you just need some white noise. They were like, all of your emails don't need to be good. Like have some that are just kind of white noise. And, and literally it was really more about save the good stuff for when you're selling. That's really was the message they were getting. And um, I think part of what they were trying to tell me was if, if every email you send is fun and good and enjoyable, then at some point, and again, I, I don't really understand the logic, but I think the logic was that like, there's, there's no way to punch it up. And I was like, but why do I need to punch it up? I, I didn't really understand that. And, and that's kind of what, wh why I rejected it. Because what I found, at least with email for me is that if you do the regular stuff, well, the selling is easy. Like I'd rather yeah. do the work when I'm not selling stuff. And then when it's time to sell, I mean, I don't really have to punch it up because I'm selling to people who think of me as a friend already. Yeah. That's so interesting. Right. So I see that it with speakers, right? What happens is they give their program and they don't want to give away all their secrets. And then their voice changes and suddenly, Hey Bobby, it's Phil. You want to buy a monkey? It's like, what the hell are you doing that for? I mean, that's horrible, man. Just be really good. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny that you use the word secrets because that's one of my pet peeves um, is it's marketing speak. And let's just be honest. I don't want to say there are no secrets, but there are no secrets. I, I mean, there are no secrets. You know, there is like, you know, you can get information that, that you need to learn and all that stuff, but it's not a secret. And, and that is one of those things. And you're right. Um, and that that's one of the strangest things that I found. Like people are like, not just about emails, but I remember like someone, this was a few years ago. I was in a, I was in a mastermind and she asked if, if somebody would be willing to watch her webinar because it wasn't converting and, and maybe give her some advice. And so I watched it and I, don't, I won't get it right, but let's say she has a four step process or it, and like literally yeah. all of it's important. And the only way, like after I watched it and, and I make pop culture references all the time. Um, and when I watched it, my reaction was if you watch the office uh, in the office, after Steve Carell leaves, they're interviewing potential new managers. And one person says, I have a three point part plan to double your revenue in six months. And they said, great. What is it? So well, I'm not going to give you that. And so they go back and forth. I said, fine, I'll give you sub point B of, of point three color code said documents. And I was like, that's what your webinar is. Like, that's how people feel. You, you gave them a tip that's completely useless by itself. And if that's how your webinar goes, guess what? People are not, I mean, it's not going to convert. And it's the oh. same thing with, with emails and everything else. That's so funny. Well, so what I also see on a webinar and in email, we spend so long introducing the topic <laughs> that by the time you get to it, it's like, I, I didn't even realize you weren't done talking yet. Like I tuned out about an hour ago. Like what in the hell, right? Like who does that, man? Why do I mean? Truly, like, I got to ask you, man, I, I know there's no secrets, but so what, what the hell? Like, why is that? Why is that even a tactic? So, I mean, there's, there's a few things going on. I think part of what's happening is, is in the online marketing world, there are way too many people, I think, who are trying to condense everything into a single place, whether it's into a webinar or an email or anything like that. Whereas, and, and I'm sure you know this from your more traditional training, like most webinars outside of a lot of this like online marketing world, the webinars are only like, they're, they're a sales vehicle for people who already know, who are already in your world. They're just trying to decide, do they want to buy this product or not? Right. And so that's what normal things are happening. Or you'll have a training webinar, which is not a pitch, but people are trying to say, you know what? I'm going to take the entire customer journey from them first hearing about me to them buying and put it in like a webinar. And I'm like, you know, if you want to make your life challenging, feel free. But to me, that's the worst way to do it. I would rather be talking when I'm, when I'm in a sales conversation, whether it's a webinar or emails or anything like that, be talking to people who are already warmed up. They're already, you know, they're buyers. They're just deciding, are they buying now or are they buying later? And are they buying my products or are they buying a competing product? And 
I think that's a big piece of what's happening here in this space is people are just, they're trying to accelerate things. And I heard this great, uh, this great, uh, comment from there's a company called click minded which is about seo and they have a bunch of stuff and the guy behind it i forget his name um i think it's tommy griffiths but i could get it, i could be wrong on that he said something like the problem with online marketers is they just act weird and his point is like in normal life if somebody walked up to you and said hi i'm bobby do you want to buy something from me you'd be like who are you and what do you do? i mean that would be your response but that's what we're doing in the online marketing world i'm like let's stop that let's act like human beings first and so like that's my approach to email, but that's my approach to everything. It's like, let's just act like human beings and treat people with respect. I'm not saying don't sell. I sell a lot. I actually probably send more sales based emails than a lot of people. I mean, not more than the big companies who ever emails a sales email, but you know, um, but it's not the only thing I'm doing. Most of what I'm doing is focusing on connecting with people, building relationships so that when they're ready, they know I'm there. Yeah. That's so interesting to do. And so, I, I, cause I'm, my brain is like churning here thinking about all the crappy emails I get that are, that are thinly disguised as a sales pitch that aren't any good that are like, okay, so here's three quarters of a story. And by the way, if you buy my monkey for just $19.99, you can learn if the monkey lives or the monkey dies. And if not, you're going to make me cry. Yeah. It's like, yeah. stop. <laughs> so, so stop. I love that story, but another one that I have to tell is I'll never forget. There, there's a big company that that has training for for digital marketing, and so I signed up, and I forgot what it was. There was one thing where you could have all their training for some membership or whatever, and I did that. And so I go into the email marketing course, and the guy who's teaching it, I think it was in the first lesson or whatever, when he's when he's talking about his credentials and why you should listen to him. Part of what he says is, I know all of the ways to you know all the tricks to get people to open your emails. I'm like. Why, why do we want to trick our readers? I, I mean, again, I play tricks on my readers, but I don't ever want to trick them. Like, if you don't want to read my email, don't read my email. If you don't want to open this, I'm not going to try to trick you. And, and the biggest thing, and, and I hope you don't do this, but the biggest offender of this is people who literally like will write R-E colon as their subject line on email. And I'm like, no, you know what that is? That's lying. You're, you're, you're suggesting to people that you are responding to an email they sent you, which they did not send you. And so I'm like, you can do that. But if you trick people once or twice, again, I'm, I'm now a point. If I can get an email like that from a company, I unsubscribe immediately. It's just, I can't trust you. You're going to try to trick me. I'm done. But it's, again, it's this, what are we doing? Why are we doing it this way? Oh my gosh. An FW is another good one, right? They're forwarding a message that they didn't really forward. Hey, I got this from your coworker, Sally. Yep. No, you did not. Yeah. No, yeah. you or, did not. I promise you, Sally did not give up my name. Yeah. And the other or one is the, the other one that people do that's it's more subtle, but about our meeting later today, which makes you think that you have a meeting schedule, but it's about a webinar and they're trying to get you to attend a webinar. And I'm like, no one in real life would refer to that as our meeting. Right. Because our meeting implies that you and I have had a conversation and have set up a meeting. Um, but it's like uh, all these little things. And so I'm like, why are we doing this? I don't get it. Wow. I, I love that. Right. So, so I was going to joke with you, right. And tell me your seven secrets to sending, you know, the, to, to successful subject lines. And I would say the secrets are there is no secret. Right. Just exactly. tell the truth and yeah. be interesting about it. Right. Yeah. So the funny thing about that is, is it's, it's hilarious because I'm on, um, th there's a service Turkle, which I don't know if you know about it, but it's a, it's kind of like a helper reporter out. It's a, an equivalent thing. And so it's a submission. And one of them was like, literally, um, I don't even, it was like, give words that start with B that would be good for a subject line. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I, I don't even understand the, 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 the point, but I almost want to respond and say, um, go to the dictionary. It doesn't really matter. But Ultimately, look, subject matters or subject lines matter a little bit, especially when people are first getting into your world, right? Getting them to understand that. But at some point, that what I want people to understand is think about how you view your email inbox and, and think about it from that perspective. I don't know about you, but forget the marketing emails. When I'm just looking at a personal inbox, what do I do? I go through them. There's certain people's names who every email they send me, I'm going to open it right away. I don't need to see what it's about. And I'm like, you know, I want to see what they have to say. Then there's other people. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, I'm, maybe I'll look at this at some point. Let me see what their subject line is. So maybe it tells me. And then there's people you ignore. 
ultimately as an email marketer, you want to be the equivalent of that first category where people are like, I don't need to know what subject line is. I know Bobby's going to have something valuable in this email. So I'm going to open it. And that's what I go for. Now I sometimes use, you know, shock, uh, shock headlines one week, a couple years ago, Easter week, my subject line was, I don't like sweet baby Jesus. It was about the beer, not the person. I made that very clear in the first line, but I mean, that's what I say. Like I play some tricks on my audience and things like that, but I'm not trying to, to, you know, I'm not trying to, to literally trick them or anything like that. And yes, we should use some copy hacks of maybe use some curiosity and stuff like that. But by the way, getting to your point, please don't use a subject line that has a curiosity hook that someone can't get by reading the email. Like don't make them then click on something to go somewhere else to either buy or to listen. Or if you are going to use a curiosity hook, satisfy that curiosity in the email itself so that people don't feel cheated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Clo clo do the opposite of what NLP tells us. And that is close the loop. Right. Don't just leave it open and hang. And then eventually, by the way, do you remember what we talked about three weeks ago? Well, now, do -do -do -do. here you go, buy my crap. Click my <laughs> stuff. Aren't I great? Yeah, right. And look, I will sometimes open hooks uh, or open loops, but that's more, you know, in an actual, when I'm in a conversion copy mode of trying to sell something or sell a webinar or sell a training. But other than that, no, I don't. I mean, you know, I, I, I just don't understand why we have felt the need to do all of this. And it's, it's the same thing with, it's not just email. I see this across everything and it's like, everything has to be a launch. And I'm like, why? Why can't we just, you know, say, you know, whatever, or like now it annoys me to, to, to no end when I see all these people who are like, I've got a big announcement coming. I've got a big announcement coming. And like for three weeks, they've got a big announcement. And then when you hear it, you're like, that's not really a big announcement, what, what? but clearly the announcement itself was not cool enough. So you had to like try to build suspense for three, three weeks or whatever. And, and I, I don't want to say never use those things, but think about how you would like to be treated on the other side and maybe let's, I don't know, act that way and treat the people in our audience that way too. Wow. That's, that's so hard to do for so many people. And yet such common sense, if you really think about it, because treating people like humans is all we want. I mean, I want to do business with a human being that I've gotten to know a little bit that I like a little bit and that Hey, they seem like they're pretty trustworthy because otherwise, if I if you trick me to, to your point, if I buy at some point, I'm gonna get buyers or more. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on, that's that's not it. That's that's not the ticket here. That's that's not really happening. So, huh? So interesting. So let's let's move. Let's talk more about email, Bobby, because I think you know your your book is really good. By the way, I thank you for the PDF copy of that. I can't wait to get the the physical copy. I see them hiding behind you there. Nice yeah. job there. Got one right so, here. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's one, right? So so with that, yeah, email marketing that doesn't suck. Okay, yeah. so you start the book with, you probably bought this book because your email marketing sucks. Yeah. I love that, right? And I, I think that's true. And I say that because to me, like, sucks means I have room for improvement. But why did your editor say or your publisher say, like, you probably, you shouldn't you shouldn't probably do that? So again, it's, and, and just as you could probably imagine, my editor was, you know, sometimes a figment of my imagination as I was writing the book originally, but look, most people aren't going to be as direct and as like, you know, let's just, let's call a spade a spade, but that's, that's how I approach things. And I wasn't going to dance around it. I wasn't gonna do it. But the reason I wasn't going to dance around it is I have seen very few people who are good at email marketing and it's, I don't blame them by any stretch of the imagination. I blame the people who taught them email marketing. And I, I, I chalk this up. I, in the book, I say this, that the big problem is there's two kinds of people who teach email marketing. One are conversion copywriters who used are used to basically writing conversion copy for other people, which means in their mindset, everything is I'm selling something. And the other people are funnel strategists who always want to tweak a funnel and do this. So again, it's always about selling. And so that is fundamentally one of the big problems with email is that people are always trying to sell. The other fundamental problem with email is that it's boring and people think of it as boring. And I'm trying to get people to say it doesn't have to be. And at the same time, though, I also recognize that I think a lot of people, they, they 
so there was kind of like a double meaning in email marketing that doesn't suck. Part of it is I know that for a lot of people, it sucks to write the email. Like they're just like, ugh. And, and for them writing even a weekly email, they, they are sitting there cursing as they see that cursor blinking. Cause like, what am I supposed to write? I don't know. And they put a lot of pressure on themselves or think it has to be perfect. And what I wanted to do is make it so that it doesn't have to feel that way. It can feel light, easy. You can have fun or at least not hate writing the, the writing process. And then your audience can enjoy getting your emails. And, you know, I see this, like there's so many things going on with email where people will like, they don't email their list or they hardly ever email their list. And then they'll just hire a copywriter and spend, I don't know, eight, ten thousand $10,000 to get emails written for a promotion. And I'm like, you could do that. It's probably not going to work, but you could. I mean, it'll work some. Or you could just write emails and build connection over time. And then guess what? You can write some kind of crappy sales emails and they'll actually convert better because you'll be talking to people who already know you, who already like you, who are ready to buy as long as you have the right thing for them. And so that's kind of what I was trying to get at. And, and you know, my editor in my mind, uh, wanted to say that. And, you know, my, my, my actual editor, I, I had to put, I had to put something, I think in, in the, the acknowledgements to say, I hope everybody realized she's not actually a party pooper. Uh, she was not as bad because if you read the book, there's a lot of times where I, I, I use my editor as kind of a, the, the straight man to my zany antics. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. I love that. And I love that she's not that harsh, but it's, it's fun though, to, to, to read that. And with that, right. I, one of your pieces of advice here, right? Like you're writing to a friend mm -hmm. is, I mean, honestly, I, I write every email as though I'm writing to one person, right? It's almost like dear mom, except I didn't say dear mom or dear Bobby. Right. But I, and I might include your name. Right. But I mean, that's the goal. So, so talking about that, Bobby, what does that really mean? Cause that's hard for folks to grok. So, so, I mean, there's, there's a few different play, pieces to this. And part of what I said is the, the real what makes email work so well? And let me, let me step back before I answer this question. Part of what I want people to understand is fundamentally, you need to understand how the different marketing channels fit into what you're trying to do. And email can, can really fill two very important roles. One is for sales. There's no questions. It is a sales channel, but the other is a, is a connection and nurturing channel. And so what I'm suggesting to people is that if you think about it from that perspective and you say, okay, how can I make it so that people see me as a friend so that when I go and I have something to sell them, it seems more like a friend recommending something to them and less like a random guy or random girl from the internet trying to sell me something. And if you can position yourself that way, things will work way better. So that's why we're doing it. Now, how you do it means a couple things. Number one, how would you actually talk to a friend? And, and one of the things I say, I, um, you know, one of the chapters is titled first, the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers, which if you don't know, is a reference to Shakespeare and in one of his uh, plays. And as a recovered lawyer, I always like to point out that the person who said that was actually saying was wanting to, to have a coup. And he said, the first thing we have to do is kill all the lawyers because lawyers actually are, are people who protect but, but at any rate, we'll leave that aside. But what I, I talk about in that chapter is kill off the King's English, the notion that you should be writing with perfect grammar and that, that everything should be so thought out. Because do you do that when you're emailing a friend and maybe you don't email friends, maybe you text friends. I don't really care. You don't. I mean, you just type off a quick missive and, and you let it go. So like in the book, there's a lot of my emails and we make a point of saying this. And the first time it happens, we drop a footnote to say it again. All of those emails are, are printed exactly as they went out, typos and all. Almost every email I have or, or I send has a typo. Now, I don't do it intentionally, but it's because I sit down and I write the email and I hit send. I don't have it go through eight levels of review. And I get if you work at a big, huge company, you got to do that. But for me, I, I don't worry about that. And there's, it's funny because there's this story. I don't think I included this in the book. But there was a time I sent an email and I had like two glaring typos, like literally where I, I left off an ear or something like that. So like it changed the meaning to the, the exact opposite. One of them was in the subject line and one of them was like in the second paragraph. And so someone pointed that out to me. And so I was like, oh man, this was kind of early on. So I sent an email to my list saying, whoops. 
the response I got from people, I had multiple people respond, say, I like that you have typos. Cause that's how I know it's you sending me an email. It's not polished team, something like that. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting that you add typos or anything like that. I'm simply saying you think of it that way. And, and so it, it's that approach, but it's also, you're, you're not going to be using all of these tricks that we talked about earlier. Now you might play tricks and play pranks on friends, but you're not going to be trying to trick them and use NLP and all that stuff. If you are writing to a friend, another thing you're not going to do if you're writing to a friend is use some fancy, like, you know, designed template. And there's reasons for that, that, that are separate, separate from how they will see it. Just FYI, the more like design you have in the email template you send out, the more likely you're going to land in promotions or potentially spam. So email deliverability is issues, but also subconsciously as someone who gets an email, what happens when you open an email and you see a bunch of design, you know, it's a marketing email. And so your brain says, Oh, this is marketing. Whereas if, if you just see an email, that's just, you know, the white background with the text on it, you're like, Oh, okay. This is just an email. And so there's like just little things like that, that I teach people and that I suggest, but ultimately it's find your voice and write your emails in your voice. Don't let anyone else tell you that you need to sound like them. You should not, by the way, you should not try to sound like Bobby. You know, Bobby is, Bobby is his own person and you're your own person. You want to sound like you. Right on Bobby. Right on, man. I love that. That's super helpful. So write like you, which mm -hmm. you already know how to do, mm -hmm. except you have to unlearn mm -hmm. your English teacher. So that's that's good, man. That's really good. I, I dig that. And and so with that, we all want uh, we all want newsletter subscribers, right? So we should call it a newsletter so people can get there. <laughs> no, no. Well, hold on. Oh, I oh I miss. Oh, woohoo! A newsletter said no one ever. So, oh, I just, I didn't even keep reading Bobby. Why do you say that, man? Cause I totally agree. So, and again, like this is the thing. So it, it is, it's hilarious. I was on this like mission for a long time to get people to quit calling your weekly emails newsletters. Cause like in a lot of the online groups and the marketing groups I'm in, even people who don't send something that looks like a newsletter, call it a newsletter. And I want people to stop thinking of them that way because and I say this literally, like back in my days as a lawyer, I would get literal physical newsletters. I've got all that. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I might scan it quickly, but I was never excited about it. It was never something like, oh, this is awesome. And instead, and, and the problem is those tend to be very much about like, let me give you some updates. Let me like give you some content and let me talk about this, et cetera. And so that is not, in my view, the best way to email people. If you're going to send one email a week to your audience, it should be a story. Now you're going to have a call to action. If you have weekly content, you'll often have the call to action be to check out your weekly content, whatever that is. But the real point of the email is the story. It's about giving them a little bit of insight to connect with you as a person. And this is a funny thing. Like I'd been teaching that. I, I have a course where I was teaching email. I taught that concept before. And I always thought it was because, you know, a newsletter is boring. Well, a newsletter doesn't have to be boring. I actually created a, a newsletter, which was not boring. It starts with a rant. And, and so people get like rant, a tip and all that. And so they could get to know me personally, but it's not a, a story. So they can kind of pick up my personality, but there's only so much connection that can happen through personality. My weekly emails, on the other hand, are story-based almost always, sometimes not, but almost always. And what hit me in writing this book was because I was writing this in the middle of kind of the pandemic that Something happened um, during the pandemic where I would, I was streaming a lot of series, TV shows, like old ones that I'd never watched before. And I had a, the same feeling at the end of streaming those that I used to have, like, for example, when Cheers went off the air or when Friends went off the air or when Seinfeld went off the air, which is I had this feeling of sadness. Now, in the past, I always thought that feeling of sadness was because I was like, oh, I don't know if there's going to be a show this good anymore. But now in the age of streaming, that's never my concern. Right? I mean, that we have plenty of entertainment, but I still had that feeling. And I realized that the characters on those TV shows had become kind of like part of my life. And there was sadness of me not having like, okay, what happens now? And, and what's you know going on? Well, when you tell stories in your weekly emails, you kind of become that to your readers. So I like to say that my weekly emails are effectively 
you know, the weekly meanderings of a guy who happens to be a marketing and a marketer. And, and sometimes they're about what's happening now. Sometimes they're about stuff that happened to me back in high school, but you're always hearing something about me. So people connect with me. And, and I simply want to suggest that if you take that approach, what happens is people who are naturally going to be your people who will be the people who, when they work with you once, they'll want to work with you forever. They're going to, feel more connected with you if you take that approach when it comes to email. And so let's take that approach. Let's connect with people. People enjoy reading it. And then if you want to add a second email a week, that's a newsletter style. Fine. Just don't make it boring. <laughs> don't make it boring. Wow. That's uh that's tough advice, Bobby. I'm, I'm writing that one down because I'd never. <laughs> I, I'm full of one, profound so. things like no, that. That's I, I got it, man. I'm, I'm taking lots of notes here. No, this this is really good, though, because I, I really think folks forget that the reason they signed up is because they heard of you mm -hmm. and they want more of you mm -hmm. and they like you and they want to get to know more of you. Right. I mean, that's that's really it. And sometimes it's, you know, to your point about a sales email, it's like, well, hey, I uh, put all this crap together that I know. And uh, maybe you kind of like, hey, you should probably buy it if this is where you are, right? Right. But one of the things I'll tell people is even in my sales emails, people often get get a feeling for me. So I, my, I started out in the space selling legal templates. That's what I did. And that was the big part of, of what I offered. And so, and I have a pack, which is like everything. So it's all of my templates now and in the future. And so one of the the ways I would I would start the very first email that I would send when I would do an active promotions about that was talking about why I love Chinese food buffets. And I said, it's not about the volume. It's about having a little bit of everything. But again, it's like just these little things where people get to know, well, Bobby likes Chinese food buffets. And then another thing when I talked about, because people would literally say, why is your stuff so cheap compared to com compared to competitors? And they would think it was bad. And I told this story. I was a prosecutor in Fort Worth at, at one point, And there was, I've forgotten who he was, but he's a famous chef who has been on the cooking channel and all that stuff. And um, he opened a burger joint in Fort Worth. And I was excited to go. And I went and you go and, and you look down and I basically tell the story of looking down the menu. And I was like, you know, it's a good sign. Th these burgers are all like, you know, it was like an outside shack, but these burgers are all 11, 12, $13 a piece just for the burger. They must be good. And so we ordered it and I got it. And it was just kind of eh. And so I make the point that he charged a lot because he could, not because it was any better. And, and I use that. So again, that's like people get to know me. And num what do they learn from the story? Number one, I probably like burgers. They learn I lived in Fort Worth. And they didn't know that. They learn that I'm not fancy as a general matter. And so they just kind of pick up on these little tidbits about my life, about the way I do it, even in my sales emails. Like I've had people literally say that sometimes my sales sequences are like a murder mystery. Um, just because I'm like, you know, let, let's have a little bit, bit of fun with the thing. And I'm trying to think the last, at some point I did a sales sequence that was entirely meta. The whole thing was me explaining how I was selling to you while I was selling to you. And, and just because I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, like, I read that. Yeah. Let's have fun with it. <laughs> That's funny, man. That, I love that. Yeah. But I mean, that, meta or insight or stuff about you is is super fun man and i i i certainly enjoy your emails i you know even though we were talking before right it's been five or six years since we talked i mean i feel like i still hear from you pretty darn often which is a good thing i enjoy our, our i enjoy our connection um and today was picking up like we hadn't you know like it was yesterday which i i really love man so let's Let's go one more chapter in the book here before we kind of wrap here. And that is your ABCs of a of you with a welcome sequence. It's later in the book, right? Chapter eight, really strong stuff. But I, I really think if folks get nothing else from the book, this is where they should kind of pick this up if you're already got a list. So talk to so me about this one, Bobby. So one of the things I suggest to people is, and again, people call, will call things different things. So people have different names for sequences and how you do it. But I say that early on when someone gets on your list, now you have a first email, which I give you a structure for, which is doing a very specific thing. And, but then you're either going to immediately go into a welcome sequence. Or you might have one before that, but your welcome sequence, the way I explain it is it's like orientation. And, and again, maybe I'm showing my age here, but I went to the university of Texas uh, for undergrad, I went there before we had these powerful computers on our phones and the campus is huge. So I try to say what would have happened if someone had literally just dropped me in the middle of campus and said, you got five minutes to get to class, go. 
you would know. So instead you have an orientation, like they literally have orientation the week before they used to for admitted students where you kind of get the lay of the land. To me, your welcome sequence is doing that for your audience. It's letting them understand who you are, how you can help them, what you stand for, and all of that so that a couple things. Number one, that they have this good understanding, but also they can decide whether they want to stick around or not. And so there's, there's multiple components, but I'll break it down into really kind of three big components that you can think of. Number one is how you got to be where you are. And so what that looks like is your origin story. And a lot of people teach origin stories, but you want to kind of walk through how is it that you came to be doing whatever it is to serve people. If you went through the same pain points that they did, you do the typical story in the format of you talk about you going through the hell, the pain, the struggle, all of that. What was that aha moment or things that shifts? That's the shift. And then you talk about the heaven that you're in now. So that is a pretty common structure if you're one of those people who's a couple steps ahead of the people you're helping. Now, if you're an expert based on training, you'll often do this a bit differently and talk about how you saw other people struggling with this and you found a way to help them, but you're doing the same thing. You can do this best, and I do mine as a cliffhanger. So I have two emails. The first email ends at me at the very bottom. Uh, mine talks, my first email is about my year of failure, failure as an entrepreneur, where I spent about $50,000 in total, made exactly one sale for $627. And that person asked for a refund after 29 days of a 30 day, no questions asked money back policy. And so I tell that story and I tell them about how I was at the depths of despair, ready to give up and go back to being a boring lawyer but there was one thing that changed everything. And I'll tell you all about that next week. So I kind of give it a cliffhanger. This is where I do do a bit of this kind of conversion stuff, right? So I do that. And then the next email, I pick up with what was that transition? I'll tell you, I'm not going to make you read it. Uh, in my case, it was going to church on New Year's Eve of 20, 2017. So December 31st, 2017. And the, the, the pastor was talking about the power of giving and how it changes you. And so I made giving my word of the year for 2018. And I talk about how that really did change the trajectory of everything in my business. So I talk about that and then talk about what, what I do now. So that's your origin story. You can do it in one email or two. Then after that, there's a few things, two different things you want to do. Number one, you want people to know what you stand for. What do you believe? What is different about you, et cetera? And I believe every company should have core values. We should talk about them. People should understand those things. And, and this is really kind of when you're a, a small business and it's you as the head of it, it's largely your personality, the things you believe in. So people get through my welcome sequence. They know that I believe that business should be fun. They know that I believe in, in being a radical giver. And that's why like, I don't charge for information. I give information. I only charge people if they want implementation help. Uh, they will also know things about me like that we value accessibility. And part of that like works through in everything we do of how we have built a business to make business building accessible to other people. So they learn all of these things about me. But they also will, will learn that I'm a bit of a troublemaker, that I'm not going to stand by with the status quo. I'm going to tell you what's wrong about the status quo, and, and I'm going to rock the boat sometimes so that they'll know that. If that's not for them, I want them to know that. I also want them to know, candidly, that I will use some four-letter words. Now, I don't do it all the time. I don't cuss at people, but I will you know, drop some four-letter words from time to time. And I want people to know that because if, if I'm not for them, cool. I want them to know. And that's kind of, you do this in different ways, of, of, but ultimately you're either going to have one or multiple emails that help people understand kind of those core things that you believe in that relate to your business or in the way you do business. Then the last category of things you're going to always include is how can you help them? And I want to be clear on this. This is how can you help them for free and pay? So if you have weekly content, you should tell them about that. You should tell them how to do it. And if you have greatest hits you want them to go check out, you can have an email per greatest hit, for example, that kind of helps them understand you and go check out. In my case, it, it's been a podcast, but now I have a blog, but you know, those things so that they understand that. But they should also understand how you can help them with paid offers and paid products. And this is a lesson I learned the hard way. When I first launched my... Um, 
when I first launched with the legal stuff in 2018 and got success, I was, I was calling it was like a, a hybrid course membership. I don't even remember what I called it, but it was a mix of training and legal templates. And at some point someone suggested to me, that's not really what people want. They just want the templates because they just want to solve the problem. So in late 2018, I shifted and basically said, I'm going to make all the training free and I'm going to just charge for legal templates. And I decided to create this thing called, I call my template library, which is the all access pass. And so I did a launch, a launch of that just email, but I did it via email uh, the last week of October of 2018. And I, I had success. I did all those things. But then afterwards, I sent a series of emails asking people who didn't buy why they didn't buy. And the common response I got from people was, well, I don't need all the templates. I wish you sold them individually. I'd go buy the ones I need, but I don't need all of them. And I'm sitting there thinking, huh, clearly I've not been good at messaging because I do sell them all individually. And so it, it dawned on me that I'd never told people that. And a lot of people, we simply assume that people know what our offers are and they don't. And so you want to have, you know, one or more emails that really helps people understand what are the core offers you have that can help them solve their problems so that they then know how to go buy, buy from you. And normally, by the way, that's kind of how you close out, like close out the, the welcome sequence, it, or you'll have then a bridge when it says, we're done with this. Now you're going to be going into my weekly emails. You'll be getting an email from me every week, blah, blah, blah. But that's the last substantive one will be kind of usually about one or more of your, your core offers. Wow. That's so helpful, Bobby. I'll tell you, man, I've never done that welcome sequence. And now that's on my list. And in my brain is Phil needs to write his welcome sequence. And you just gave us a great template, a great outline, a great framework to work within that, man. So thanks for that. That's super awesome. And the great part is it's in the book, right? All this stuff is here. The book is fantastic. It's email marketing that doesn't suck with Bobby Clink. So, so friends, if you're looking to get better at email marketing that doesn't suck, right? Follow along with Bobby. Mm -hmm. You can get it at bobbyclink.com. It'll be there, right? Slash email. We'll have all of his great stuff. But Bobby, if folks want to get one more tip, they want to get started. They're like, okay, yeah, okay. Buy the book, friends. But Bobby, give them one more piece of value, man. What, how do they get started along this journey of doing email marketing that doesn't suck. So what I tell people is, and and what a lot of people struggle with is a story piece. So I'm going to give you a tip on how to start to collect stories. And here's where I'm different than other people who talk about a lot of different things, marketing wise, et cetera, is I recognize that part of the reason why this, like why I'm good at this is because I naturally am a storyteller. When you look at my strengths, I love the Gallup Strengths Finder. I don't know if you've taken that, but if you take that, you'll find out a lot about yourself. And when you read mine, it it is very clear that telling stories, but not just telling stories, finding seemingly unconnected things and connecting them is part of my strength. And a lot of people struggle with that. So I wanted to come up with a way to help people write the stories. So we talk about this structure for emails, for your weekly emails, but for a lot of your emails, which is hook, story, call to action. And if you don't have like weekly content, you'll also put a lesson in there somewhere. But the way you write these is backwards. You figure out what is your call to action, which is going to be go check out my content, or it's something related to the lesson you've given them. So you figure out what is that lesson and you tease out what is kind of a, a thread from that lesson or from your content. What is a thread of idea from this content? Then you have to work backwards and say, what is a story from my life that I can use to make the same point. Now, if you're not good at this naturally, what you need to start doing is saying, what are the themes that I talk about a lot in lessons and content, et cetera, and then start collecting the stories for that. So in my case, some of those would be that I'm rebellious, that I reject the status quo. So I need to come up with examples from my personal life where I rejected the status quo and it ended well for me. Other things that I talk about is, you know, the joy of building a business you love. So I need to come up with stories of not business building, but other times where you do something that you don't enjoy and, and you don't stick with it. Or if you find the thing you do enjoy, you will stick with it. So I, I find those stories and then I can tell them as a way, as a lead in 
for people to truly understand and tar- start to internalize the message of my content, of my business coaching, et cetera. And so what you want to do is figure out what are the themes that you're going to have over and over again in your content, and then just start by creating a page for each in a journal or your, your notes on your notes app on your phone. And what I want you to do is at the end of a day, at the end of a week, whatever cadence makes sense for you, ask yourself a few questions. What did I do this week? Who did I meet with? Where did I go? And just kind of go through it. And and as you think about it, say, could I tell that story and could that relate to a theme in my life? And if so, just jot it down. If not, discard it and let it go. But asking those specific questions of where did I go? Who did I meet with? What did I do? Will spur memories that you wouldn't otherwise have. And then you start cataloging it and you'll have your list of stories. What I'll tell you is over time, you get better at it. Even people who, who struggle with this up front have told me as they do it, they just start to get to the point that they see stories naturally and they don't have to use the journal anymore. But as a starting point, it's a good way to train yourself to see the lessons in the everyday stories that you can then bring into your business. Wow. That's, that's great advice. I'm never far without my moleskin and I'm never without my phone because yeah, we're always capturing. And I think that's awesome suggestion, Bobby, if folks want to, you know, get started finding their stories and get better at telling your stories, just do more of it, right? Start writing these emails and think of them, like Bobby said in the beginning, right? As though you're writing a letter to a friend. Mm -hmm. Don't save your good stuff for your sales emails. Don't do that. Right. Don't do that. that. Good, good, good. So folks, if you're listening here, Bobby Klink is the guy. It's K-L-I-N-C-K, bobbyklink.com. Get to know him. His book Mm -hmm. is Email Marketing that doesn't suck. Yep. It's awesome. I have the PDF. I can't wait to get the hardcover. Yep. This book will change your marketing, which will change your pocketbook, which will change your life. And I don't say that about a lot of the books and a lot of the folks that I get to talk to, but this book will absolutely help you. So Bobby, thanks so much, man, for spending some time with me again today. As always, bro, I learned from you so much. Thanks, man. It, it, hey, it's been my pleasure. And you know, I appreciate the kind words about the book. So I definitely appreciate that. And, and, you know, what I'll just say to people is if you get the book, it's not your typical marketing book where I'm only going to give you a taste and then you got to buy something from me. Now I can't cover everything, but I give you a taste, but I give you a place where you can go get all the resources for free, like that we're working on now. So you'll be able to get all of it for free. I'm just giving it all away to everybody. Yeah. Bobby, you do that all the time, man. And I value that. That's, that's really helpful. So thanks, man. And congrats again on a great book. Thanks.